A while back, Rob and I started a discussion uh, about why we put so much focus on protecting only some animals, which resulted in this uh, video. So Jonas and I were discussing the other day, why is it even important to protect large animals? And Jonas, I think I made my point pretty clear. We need the elephants. You gotta convince me that we need the pandas though. All right, this left me with the question why the giant panda is getting so much attention. So let's talk about it. I think you can all agree with me that the giant panda is one of the biggest symbols for animal uh, protection. Much of its fame because it is on the logo of the largest organization working for animal protection and conservation, WWF. But before we talk about the conservation and protection of the pandas, let's learn a little bit more about the animal. The giant panda is a bear in the order carnivora, even if its diet consists of about 99% bamboo. This is pretty interesting because its digestive system is like that of a carnivore, so getting enough energy from eating pretty much only bamboo is not that easy. Microbes in its gut helps break down the cellulose in the bamboo, but it still has to eat more than 10 kilograms of bamboo shoots every day to get enough energy, which also helps spread the seeds and therefore helps maintain the forest. The giant panda once roamed a large portion of China, but it's today only found in a few small and isolated patches of mountain forest in south central China. Unlike other bears though, it doesn't hibernate. Instead, it migrates down from the mountains to lower elevation during winter to avoid the worst weather. So it does move some considerable distances. And this is where it starts getting tricky. Loss of habitat is said to be the greatest threat to the pandas today, as uh, large areas have been cleared for human use, like agriculture, livestock and timber. And the land that is left has become highly fragmented, leaving uh, panda populations isolated from each other and also affecting their seasonal migrations. So the question is, would it matter so much if the pandas disappeared? Well, the forest would probably still be there if the matter was only about the pandas being there or not. But it's just not that simple. A large part of the panda's original habitat is gone today. By protecting the pandas, we're also working to protect the remaining forests in which the pandas live, areas with high biodiversity. So the point I'm trying to get to is how do we measure the importance of something? It really isn't as simple as do we need it or not? And honestly, it shouldn't be that simple. Scientists are estimating that we are right now experiencing the worst rate of extinction since the dinosaurs disappeared 65 million years ago. And just to clarify, extinction of species is a natural occurrence. All species simply won't live forever. But what we are seeing now is far beyond any natural rate of extinction. A lot of organisms are under threat, but many of the threatened species may not make it into the public spotlight. But some species we just fall in love with right away. And this is where I think the panda becomes one of the most important species. Tough questions need good ambassadors. And just like we have our own role models and idols to look up to. Captain, my captain. I have a dream. We also need some species to be poster models for conservation. And never underestimate the power of cuteness. Once we have found one animal that we like, we will hopefully find more. And I think we can all agree that the panda is doing a pretty good job being a role model and ambassador. We did this video in collaboration with WWF, an organization that does awesome work on all levels when it comes to environmental awareness and wildlife protection. And if you want to check out some of the projects that they are doing right now uh, and even support their work, click on the link here below. And I also want to give you a little update on the pandas. Uh, right now, in the latest count, which was actually in 2004, the total uh, wild panda population was up to about 1,600 individuals. And believe it or not, this is actually a good number compared to how it was a couple of decades ago when the estimate was down to about 1,000 individuals. So Rob, I hope I convinced you that the panda is important to protect. And to all of you watching this, I just want to tell you that Rob doesn't really have a grudge against pandas. Uh, the only grudge he has is um, from memories in 2006 when we were in Bristol, he got to dress up as the ugly panda while I got the really nice panda suit. Um, brings back bad memories to him, I think. Uh, good times though. Last thing, for the next story, I know one of our friends is working on polar bears right now, a relative to the panda. So for the next story, Rob, I want you to find out whether the polar bear 
really will be able to survive if things continue the way they are right now and the Arctic keeps melting. And before I leave you, I want to give a big thank you to everyone who's helping us, supporting us and sub subscribing to our YouTube channel. It really helps us and allows us to continue making these videos. So thank you and see you in another video.